Good afternoon, multiverse. Welcome to MNW Warzone. I am Warzone General Manager Jerry Aldini, and with me this week, as always, is Mr. Pete McPherson. Hello. Michael Montoya um, ha uh, has a note from his doctor saying he, and it, it's, it's, I'm not sure it's saying Ebola. I don't think that's accurate. It's like he had a note and there was a fill in space. Anyway, we, uh, so we don't have Michael at the moment, but that's fine. Pete and I will keep the show rolling. And uh, what a show we have for you. We're gonna, I'm going to have a special announcement later on in the program. But in the meantime, we have so much to get ready for today. We have to figure out contenders for belts. We have people already contending for belts. So today, we will name a number one contender for the unified tag Team Championship and when High Voltage takes on Shoot Nation and in our main event the former brothers in arms the former Turkish delights Osman Kilik will challenge the constant nightmare Constantinople for the big oof championship so with that but before we get into our first match there's somebody we have to hear from somebody we haven't heard from in a while and frankly it's been alarming ladies and gentlemen I give to you the victimizer Wilson multiverse Nexus Wrestling. Have you missed hearing my voice? Have you missed the presence of the victimizer on your screens? I have too. More than anything in the world. Which is why I'm here to tell you that I haven't gone anywhere. No, no, no. I'm still here, and I still want the Multiverse Heavyweight Championship. The title I fought tooth and nail for in the main event of Multivania, just so Zacko Duo could let it slip into the hands of that filthy vampire scum. <laughs> oh. But sadly, Samjack seems to be occupied in the moment. So while he dithers about dealing with that, I have a proposition for you, Aldini. Line him up. Line up everybody with grievances against me and let me face them in combat any way they want. I'm sure you can find someone. Maybe Mr. Butler wants his petty revenge for his mascot. Graven's been wanting to fight me for years. Maybe you can get a loan from Mr. Rabbit for a bit. Jagger's already shown up. I'm sure he'd love to get some sort of revenge against me. There are plenty of people in VIP who would love to get their grimy hands on me. Especially you, Azir. Hell, bring out some retirement people if you want. Let Michael Montoya have another wrestling match. Why don't you step into the match and fight me? I don't care. Whatever gets me into that ring. Whatever lets me victimize again. <laughs> Give me the bodies to break, Jerry. And I'll let the world know that Wilson is still here and that he's the greatest threat to peace the multiverse has ever known. <laughs> that's a long list, but you know what? <clears throat> you know what? Yeah, sure, that actually sounds like a good idea. Wilson, you're on. You're right, a lot of people over the years have 
said they want to get their hands on you. I'll work with the brass. I'm sure we can cull the tapes and find people. Yeah, I am perfectly willing to give you that ask. It's a reasonable ask. So why not? And uh, tweeting out as soon as that was heard, Mr. Butler said, once my issues with Wolfboy are dealt with, I might take you up on that offer, Wilson. You see, there you go. Uh, and also tweeting out to Maximilian Thunderthighs, Wilson, no disrespect, no grudges, no anger. We're one on one and I can't wait. Let's have that match one day. Hashtag Max versus Wilson. See, that's the thing I was worried about as soon as this, people are stepping up. You know what? Uh, we'll figure it out. I, you know, Pete, we need to figure who, who do you think has the biggest grudge with Wilson right now? Because Ginger Boy's gone. He's retired. Uh, I'd have to talk to Rabbit about borrowing Graven. Yeah. Uh, VIP. Ooh, there's some possibilities there. I don't know. Well, you know what? Well, we, I, I have a week, at least a week to mull that over. In the meantime, you people came here to see what we do best here on Warzone, and that is high-octane wrestling action. So... With no further ado, let's head to ringside. Your opening match is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first. The Power Surge. So, in a way, this is a little bit of a grudge match today, kind of, sort of. Uh, if you've been following the saga of the International Combat Club, uh, they are looking for new members. Power Surge was supposed to have a nice match. Uh, in fact, we'll be after this match hearing from Nice Ice. And it got interrupted by a certain tiefling... So we're now going to have Power Surge take on said Tiefling. And the winner, well, the winner gets to have a match at the upcoming pay-per-view with Nice Ice. And introducing their opponent, Rapture. There he is, Michael Montoya's second favorite tiefling. It's Power, it's not Power Search, it's Rapture New Road. I was only off for a week and I've completely forgotten how to announce. That's fine, folks. You're about to have the action you've been coming to expect on MNW Warzone. Rapture, you know, he had that match with Lockin. And I guess he wasn't happy with how it resulted with, you know, being handed a loss by the funny man from the Super Soldier program. So, uh, yeah, let's let these two fight. What? There's a meme about that, right? Let them fight. My nephew keeps telling me. Oh, and all right off the bat, Power Surge throwing Rapture in the corner. Oh, going up top and dragging him down. Knee to the face. Oh, and Power Surge going up top early. Oh! Whoa! That was, I, that was an off-the-top rope lariat. And I, right now, it's this match has been all you know, on the early go, all power surge dominating. Oh, I, maybe I spoke too soon. Dragon Screw takedown by Rapture, but countered by power surge and a standing moonsault. Two. Oh, 
Oh, what? And then an off the top rope moonsault. Power surge is flying high. Oh. Rapture, though. Trying to show his own specialty, and around the world we go. Yeah, I expect we're going to be seeing a lot of top rope action from these two. I mean, they're. Oh! Power Nobody Surge. home on that one. Yeah, Rapture did not know where Power Surge was. Oh, neckbreaker! Oh! And your winner, Power Surge. Well, that was a quick match, but uh, Power Surge, Rapture had the rope. Well, what's going to happen here? Oh, he shakes his, I guess he's not playing. I mean, Rapture did grab the rope. The ref didn't notice it, but I guess Rapture is not holding that against Power Surge. And is uh, being gentlemanly about it. I would have thought he'd be pissed, but uh, it shows what I know. Well, he, he did hit, hurt himself pretty bad off that, that top rope. Dude. I mean, that's fair. I mean, he could just decide, you know what? <clears throat> fair. I, you know, he, I, I think he thought, oh, I got the rope. I'll get out this way and instead of kicking out, which might have been the wise move at that moment. Well, as I said, let's uh, let's hear from the man that uh, that his recruitment efforts spawned that match in the first place, ladies and gentlemen. Nice ice. I am sorry, Power Surge. Truly, this was supposed to be a match between you and Larkin only. I didn't mean to soil it with Rapture's silly games. Now. Rapture New Road, you had no right to interfere with that match. You embarrassed yourself against Locken and had the gall to boast that D&D &D is the most well-known faction in MNW. And then, oh, and then you interfered with Locken's match against Power Surge. <laughs> oh, Rapture, I am not pissed off. No, 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 my friend. Not at all. I am thrilled. Where was this fire weeks ago? Where was this passion against Larkin? Rapture New Road, I want you to show me your willpower. I want to see your fighting spirit. I want you to show me your violence. You want a fight? Maybe I can arrange an opportunity for you. And all you got to do is show me. Show Show me the same passion you carry on the mic in the ring! You want me, Rapture? Show me that you love wrestling! <laughs> well, and as we saw, uh, things did not go Rapture's way. Power Surge, on the other hand, I think showed Nice Ice what he wanted to see. So it Power Surge has earned that shot against the Siberian Cyborg. Also tweeting out on social media, the constant nightmare Constantinople. As the main event of this truly chaotic show, let me say that this to my opponent, Osman. Don't try to make this anything other than what it is. This isn't about our past or what we've become. I have a shiny belt and you want it, that's fine. Greed is motivation enough. At least it's honest. Face me, but do it honestly. I I see where Constantinople's coming from, but I do feel there's something personal in it for Osman. But we'll find out in our main event. You know, we have, Pete, so much going on. There's, there's, there's just, there's so many things happening right now that, uh, you know what, I I think I need to go, hang on, I'll, I'll hold the fort, Pete, I'll be, I'll be right back. All right, all right, all right, all right folks, well, uh, as I'm holding down the fort, apparently, uh, uh, Jerry has uh, some, some business to take care of, and uh, yeah, let's, let's see what happens. So, 
Oh, how is that opening match multiverse? All right, I've got a lot to go over. Uh, so I'm going to try and get us all in before they uh, play me out. So, first off, I will confirm October 22nd will be the next Warzone pay-per-view. Uh, the Brass has decided to keep the official name of the pay-per-view under wraps at this time. It'll be a surprise. So, let's look forward to that. But uh, now i got to address something else that's going on. And this involves you, Louis McDonald, and Beowulf. All right. I know you two have beef with each other. Lots been going back and forth. So, right now, there will be a match at the pay-per-view between Louis McDonald and Beowulf. The prize being the Mystery in the Bank briefcase. But, listen up. Wild Hunt, Legion, you are barred from touching each other at all. Nothing. The first person that goes after the other team, well, there will be a consequence. That consequence is that your opponent will get to choose the stipulation of the match. So let's see if you can keep your hands off each other for a few short weeks. Got it? Good. Other titles will be determined as well. As I already announced, tonight, High Voltage will take on Shoot Nation and we will see who gets to face the all odds for the tag titles. Next week, Gore Wheel takes on Flyboy. And the winner of that will face Kane for the Nexus Titan Championship. And as for the multiversal title, well, Maximilian Thunderthighs and Mega Blitz are in the running. But in the spirit of fairness, there is going to be a fatal five-way next week the winner will face sam jacks at the pay-per-view for the multiversal heavyweight championship all right folks back to the show well, several big announcements there from uh, uh, our head head of Warzone, Jerry Aldini. Jerry making his way back up to the ring. Or back to the commentary booth. Excuse me. Ah, oh, all right. I just, that was something. I just, I, it felt, felt wrong announcing any of that from the announce booth. I just, I had to get in the ring. It was important. We got a lot going on. We have a pay-per-view coming up really soon. And so we have people that have to get ready. So I think that, that covers everything. I, I don't think I left anything off. Well, the the hardcore, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. We're, we're working that one out. <sighs> well, in the meantime, uh, so as we stated, there has been a lot going on with a lot of people. Uh, as I said, Next week, Gore Wheel and Flyboy Bell will face each other, the winner of whom gets to challenge Kane for the Nexus Titan Championship. Kane has been having his own issues, though, not just with contenders. There has been friction with his own mentor, and I will tell you, Storyteller has not been helping matters with his cryptic advice to Kane. So uh, we're about to have a match, and we're going to see just how well Master and Apprentice are as far as being on the same page. But first, tweeting it on social me uh, media, McMorgan saying, Deal, if either of those rats come after myself or Beowulf, all bets are off. Fair enough. And I don't care where it is. I don't care. I don't care if it's in the parking lot, in the ring, at catering, if, if you know, if Beowulf goes down to the Tim Hortons and Louis McDonald, you know, dumps a, b a bunch of Tim bits on him. That's going to be it. And, and as for you, Earl King West, if I see any fake fuckery, if I see any mysterious things happen that affect Wild Hunt, I'll just assume it was you. And I'll initiate the stipulation. So just watch yourself. I... You know, I know I got Jeff. 
but I, I'm, I'm actually glad we're getting our own Omni Slayer. Even if Michael's going to be upset about that. Well, you know what? Michael's not here right now. Michael's not here right now. Yeah, no, it's just that, uh, you know how he'd sometimes look at the roster and go, nice? Jagger is going to be our 70th roster member. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he's I, I think that's gonna I think that's gonna disappoint him. But that that you know what that is neither here nor there because it's time for tag team action. Let's take it down to ringside. The following is a tag team match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, the Absolute Unit. And here you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You know them. You love them. It is Absolute Washington and Forrest, the Fortress, Wade, the Absolute Units, TJ the Mint Gable taking the week off. And that they are going to be taking on Master and Apprentice. They've been having a great run, but, uh, you know, it was a hard call deciding who was going to get that title shot. And I just, in the end, the brass felt that High Voltage and Shoot Nation had been the best showing recently, but I still expect big things from these guys. In the meantime, and introducing their opponents, entering the ring first, it's gotta be Kane. Ladies and gentlemen, your Nexus Titan champion, Kane, master of. 8,602 moves. And uh, it's interesting. He's the champion, but he's coming out first. You normally would think it would be the other way around. But, uh, you know, he is still but the apprentice. Well, I mean, he is coming out second in terms of opponents. Well, yeah, as again, as is proper for a champion. I'm just like... You know, I don't understand this whole, you know, back in my day, I mean, I had people who coached me that I sometimes teamed with, but it wasn't always, uh, well, pecking order, who comes out when, but. Well, and I mean, to say that there hasn't been some animosity between the Master and the Apprentice. I mean, it's, there's been friction. I mean, it's part of the reason we even are having a match tonight. Kane, though, I mean, the, the tutelage has served Kane well. I mean, he holds the second most prestigious belt. Yep. And introducing their tag team partner. It's our cool. <laughs> And there he is, ladies and gentlemen, the master of the dark side, XR Kuhn, the man who took the unfocused, chaotic Kane and turned him into a devastating focused champion. And who, along with Storyteller and their machinations, gave Kane what he sought after for years, his vengeance against Dr. Grimm. Who, by the way, I, uh, I did receive a, a note earlier. Uh, the, uh, the doctor will be in. He has requested mic time. And I decided it was in everyone's best interest to give it to him. Yeah. I think we can all agree that was probably a good call. So here we have it. 
side. He's just it's drawing on the power of the dark side. Well, he's just drinking it in. Man. Just you know, he's getting in touch with it. Really in touch. With it. Really, really in touch with it. Oh, that's uh yep there he is ladies and gentlemen and we're gonna see how well he and Kane can function you know it's it's as I, as we've said it's not been the greatest time for them lately they've uh, not quite seen eye to eye <clears throat> but we're gonna start out with absolute Washington and the champion. Oh, an impressive beginning by Absolute. Headbutt you. Oh, but again, there's a reason why Kane is the champion. Got him by the hair. I mean, it, it's. I mean, it's it's Absolute Washington. It's it's right there. But now the Sith Lord. Oh, I think he threw him by his hair. Yeah, hairy situation. Oh! But Absolute Washington giving as good as he get. Again, this is a man. Former tag team champion. Oh! Boot to the head. Oh, that back and forth. Absolute Washington. Oh, was going for a suplex. Blocked by XR Coon. Oh, wow! I... I, you know, we saw Rapture New Road do something. That's like the reverse of Raptures around the world. Be well about it. Oh, Kane comes in, but Washington decides to bring in the big man. Ladies and gentlemen, the Fortress. By the way, Forrest, thank you for, uh, thank you for the cobbler. And tell your mama thank you for Pete and I. And oh, splash! The big man splash. And then just look at the power of Forrest Wade. Military press. And just dropping him. Drop. I, I don't care how strong you are. That hurts. Oh! But Kane never won at a loss. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Kane practicing some chiropractic. Yeah, although I think that specializes in trying to cause a pinch nerve. Oh, and a very, a very elbow stylish drop. elbow drop by the Nexus Titan champion. But again, the power of Forrest. Bringing him up. Oh, and just measured him. And again, showing tag team acumen, getting his master in. And now who will win, the Fortress or the Sith Lord? Oh, what's well, one? And a clothesline, ladies and gentlemen. Man knocked him out. Oh, Kane got in there in time. I mean, timely rescue indeed. Kane just lightning into him. Luthes press. Again, Kane's full of a lot of anger, a lot of rage. What XR taught him was how to focus it. On the other hand, you've got Forrest, who is really the thinking man's hoss. He's big, he's strong, he's good at math. He's a that certified public slam. accountant, folks. Oh, and giving absolute the pin. Oh, but not fast enough to stop the... Get there in time. Yep, Kane got there in time for the breakup. Yeah. 
Uh, absolute versus XR. Drop kick. I mean, then and they both tag in their partners. I mean, this is definitely a skill versus power. I mean, not to say that Forrest is unskilled, but he's definitely stronger. But Kane is a technical master. Wrenching back on that head, right in the right corner. Oh, work! You know, he's been focused on Forrest's neck the entire match. Does seem to be where his focus is. Now he's switching back to XR. I mean, that's, you know, if you can't move your head, it's hard to wrestle because it's hard to keep an eye on where your opponent is. Plus, it just hurts. If your neck's out of whack, everything's out of whack. Bringing him back to the blue corner. Here's the tag. Oh, and a little double team effort by the units. And down he goes. I mean, when you've got that much power, oh, going for uh, that that uh, that kick, but XR Kuhn not there. Yeah, the scissor <coughs> kick that ended up getting countered with a Pele. It's not been, and again, Kane also being out of the way for a kick. Oh, oh! I thought he was going to hang up. Heard something about heard you about that strength issue. I get. Well, now it's it's absolute washing. That's a whole different ball game. Oh, but now there's that bulldog, and they switch out. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the deduct this locked in on Kane. Oh, it's locked in there good. Oh, Absolute's going in there to intercept XR. He intercepted Kane him, but... To break out of it. Kane, yeah, Kane survived the deduct this. Going for the pin. One. Oh! Absolute could not get around to block XR from doing the interference. I think I think this is a good. Uh, well, I was gonna say it was a good idea for us to get XR Kun out of there, but XR Kun managed to do some damage on the way out. Uh, picking him up, slamming him down. Real barrel. Slam. Oh! Just chucking him. Chucking him and then bringing in Absolute Washington. Kane wisely bringing in his master. The, again, you see the tag team acumen of the units. Rapid tags. Let the fresher man get in. Oh! Break, break the back. Oh, Forrest was going to uh, probably go for the bottom line or the or the death and taxes. Sorry, able to reverse it, though. Now he's got him up. Yep. Oh! And that was the, I believe that was the force shall set you free. Bringing back in Kane Forrest, tagging in Washington. Oh, neck breaker. Then again, rapid tags. The Sith Lord versus Absolute Washington. And again, the Force will set you free. But only a two count. Kick out at two. Yeah. 
Bringing him into the red corner. Oh, just working over Washington. Forrest the Fortress Wade recovering on the outside. Meanwhile, XR Kuhn going for the pin. Oh! Oh, that was a close one. Oh! Again. Not there! Oh, uh, Superman punch from Absolute. Oh, but XR Kuhn not they're gonna let him do whatever it was he was planning. Bringing in his protege, in comes Kane. Going for the oh, pin. Kane going in all to the pin. Oh! Oh, Washington working over the arm. Trying to rip it out. Maybe a little payback for Forrest's neck. Oh, what, what, what's he doing? Oh. Stretching oh. him out. Now he's going to, oh, are we going to see? Oh, whatever he was planning, XR Kuhn was there. Oh no, here it comes. Here it XR comes. Oh, the 309 countered by Washington. Countered with that powerful knee. And what? Uh, it it looks, this is insane. Absolute Washington bringing it to the champ. This is an absolute back and forth match. It is. It and oh, and now Forrest giving him the oh. Broken up by XR Kuhn. Right at the two. Oh, now four is going after XR. I mean, I don't blame him. Bringing him out to dry. Bringing in his partner. Kane's still the legal man. Wait, X. For absolute watching, I think it was a mistake focusing on XR Kuhn when Kane was up and the legal man. I think Washington got XR confused. Out of the ring. It could have been, or I think he was maybe confused about who the legal man was. Perhaps. Now he's going for the pin in the corner. And another breakup by XR. Oh! Busted him open! is absolutely bleeding right now. Game dropping them elbows, tagging in his master. We've definitely had a momentum shift in the favor of the dark side. Oh! And then Washington weaponizes his hair! Judo toss. Oh, I think we're about to see it again. And the force shall set you free! Two, two. Only a two count. The absolute action got the shoulder up in time. Yeah, I, Kane actually successfully blocked Forrest, but Absolute Washington is not giving up. And again, doing that stretch out he did on Kane. Well, Kane's been focusing a lot on the neck. Been seeing a lot of limb focus from the absolute units. Oh! Double axe hammer from the top rope, and in comes Forrest. Yeah. 
Going for the pin. Pin still recovering outside the ring, I believe. Oh. Force just stomping away at XR's chest. Sometimes you just use that power and the weight advantage. And a sky high slam! Only gets a two count. And now he's focusing on King, getting him out of the ring. Is this going to be enough to give him an advantage? Oh, going up top. What's well, absolute Washington doing? Oh, an elbow, oh, an elbow from elbow the top drop. rope. Bringing him back to his corner. Tagging in for Oh, teamwork. Makes the dream work. Raining blows down on XR Coon. Headbutt ya. Oh, and yeeting him by the neck. Bringing him back to the corner and then just working over the Sith Lord. And in comes Kane. Bringing up the tax man and, oh, just bringing him down, raining blows. Oh, now I think. And I think he's managed to bust open Forrest. So he has now made both of the units bleed. For the pin. Kick out at two. Now, go, getting into it with Washington, who's not the legal there. man. Ref, get what? You got to get him out of there. And, well, Washington did the job. He distracted Kane Long. Oh, no! Bringing him back to the no, yep. He's. I don't think Forrest could decide what he wanted to do with Kane right there. A little bit of hesitation will cost you, especially against Kane. And there he goes. Bring him into the corner and attack. Oh, they're doing this again. Oh, bring him up and bring him down. And tagging again. Oh, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like it's Forrest's turn. And to duck this. Able to get out of the deduct this, but now he's in the pin. One, absolute hold two, kick out at two. Kane able to kick out. Oh, what's this? Oh! Oh! Ball outside the ring while these two handle their business. That two? That's two again. Oh, that was. I thought he had him there. I did too. And oh, that military press. Still that strength, even after this lengthy match is gone. And, oh, setting up again. What are we going to see? We're going to see another deduct this. I, yes, we are. Oh, Kane taps. And your winners, the absolute you. Well, as the units celebrate, I'm wondering how this is going to affect the unity between XR Kuhn and Kane. They, the Nexus Titan champion tapped.
And, you know, no matter what way you look at it, they made a champion tap. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A big win for the absolute units. Uh, maybe a way they're trying to say, hey, maybe we should have been in that match later today to determine the number one contender for the Nexus Titan champion, or for the tag team belts. Oh, I'm getting my belts mixed up here. Well, in the meantime, we've, so much has been going on lately, of course, as the entire multiverse knows. And one of the issues, there's been, how do I put this nicely? There's been issues with former members of Cloud9. By the way, uh, we are we are hearing that uh, they are doing everything possible to make uh, to make the Funk comfortable in the assisted living facility. He's uh, he is still not woken up. So uh, you know our, our best to him. But in the meantime, we still have to deal with what's happening between Nakano Kirishima, Ignacio Cervantes. And Sergeant Major Payne. So let's go here from the unknown soldier himself, ladies and gentlemen. Sergeant Major Payne. Okay, look, I've been simmering on this for a while now. Ignacio, I keep hearing that you didn't have any friends or people you trust. Dude, I'm still your friend. But you are still in the past talking about Funk and Cloud9. Let the past die kill it if you must this is me asking as a friend stay out of this fight with me and blood money this will be the closest i have been to taking on the senile mad hatter himself since my first match in mnw but if you want to fight then i will make this perfectly clear once my fight with knocking no balls is finished ignacio you're next. Well, that's uh, there. That's an issue that is, I guess, just gonna keep on rolling. Uh, I guess so. I'm just not sure. You know, you, you look at these things and you think. Okay. When are the when are these guys gonna get their issues settled? And then you realize maybe maybe never. You, you keep hoping. I keep hoping. So. But anyway. Um. Uh, meanwhile, um, we have a. Uh, Maximilian Thunderthighs uh, at the beginning of the match tweeted out, "Let's go units, have a great match." X Arcoon, I uh, don't know you as well, uh, so fight, I guess. I okay. Uh, also, you have uh, actually Nakato Kirishima tweeting out, "All right, Sarge, let's show the war zone what war looks like." Yeah, that's a. Uh, Eh, you know, I, I, I mean, fair enough. Eh, we'll get it all worked out at some point. In the meantime, I I promised someone mic time. He's not someone you really should keep waiting. Although I, I, I'm, I'm sure that, you know what, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to let him go. Ladies and gentlemen, let's head down to ringside. And let's hear from... Dr. Grimm. I'm sure everything's fine. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. Greetings, multiverse. So, last time we met, things didn't go as well as I might have hoped. Yes, I got pinned by someone who Jack Abbott Congratulations, by the way. 
I guess pinning me earned you a chance at a title shot. Congratulations. Not that it matters. So you got lucky once. And you pinned me. <laughs> As if that makes a difference. The murder cave will... Let me be clear. Now and forever be the most feared faction in MMW. No matter what happens, you are facing not just me. You are facing the glorious engineer that is Chaz Lee, Grizzly Adams, and of course, let's not forget the All Father. So, asking your moment of glory. And, but to know that you have attracted the attention of the Murder Cave. And much like a certain anonymous group out there, we do not forget. And we do not forgive. So have your little match with Aiden's boys, and we will see you later. Um, I, I mean, in my opinion, I think he's taking that loss fairly well. Uh, I, yeah, let's, 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 let's go with that. He's, he's taking it well. Uh, cause the, uh, the other option is, uh, not what I want to think about at all. No. Uh, <coughs> so with that. Uh, we, we have more action coming up, but, uh, first there is uh, someone else who was wanting some mic time. Uh, they, uh, they sent a message in. One of the other issues we have is <laughs> one of our rookies, Jean Tristam had a wonderful undefeated streak that was unceremoniously ended by Injustice Jake. And uh, they have been having a little war of words. So ladies and gentlemen, let's now hear from the merciless Merc himself. Ladies and gentlemen, Injustice Jake. Flyboy, I'll offer congratulations on your advancement in this little Titan runoff tourney. I relish any fight with a competitor who takes me to the brink like that. But it does make me wonder, despite our shared veterancy, would you have been able to outlast me if not for a certain pale prick? Question best left answered at a later date, I think. I've got a personal problem to take care of right now. I need to tutor one of our rookies on the consequences of their actions. Jaunt, you demanded reparations for an injustice done. Let me congratulate you as well. You've reached an expert on the subject. You demanded his attention? You've got that, too. Alongside every ounce of desire, aggression, and righteous fury. Without remorse, and certainly without mercy, I will make sure that reparations are paid for the true injustice done here. If you wanted me, Jaunt, you've got me. But I need you to listen close, because you missed the one warning I was going to give you. I am here. And you... <laughs> you should run. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, remember when Jake was not ominous? Anyway, well, uh, be that as it may, we still have a lot of wrestling to do, so let's get back to it. Ladies and gentlemen, 
let's head down to ringside for our next match. And there he is, folks. Carcaradon. So he's been, um, how, how do we say this, Pete? Um, less human of late? Yeah, yeah, you can say that. Yeah, yeah, less human. Let's let's go with that. So, uh, yeah, and he's been itching for action. So let's uh, then, but uh, I think we've got a good opponent for him to uh, to uh, put himself up against this time around. And introducing their opponent, the Dagger, Dagger Well, it's been a few weeks since we've seen this man, the Dwarven Prince, Daggerick. And this brings up an important question. Is Carcaridon going to get himself added to the Book of Grudges? Because, I mean, that's not a book I want to be in. At all. Nor I. Nope. And as he comes down, that, uh, you know, I was uh, talking with Aiden Zero when he was uh, co hosting recently. And yeah, you know, he was in the cell opposite Dagrick, uh, and he said uh, one of the hardest things about trying to sleep at night was Dagrick listing off all the grudges constantly. So like counting sheep, but counting grudges. Counting grudges, yeah. Or working on that motorcycle. Is that in the art of motorcycle? So yeah, it said, yeah, he said the motorcycle was the only thing that ever seemed to calm Dagrick down. But here he is, looking to, uh, you know, make you know, Dagrick has always been an interesting competitor. Then they're off. Oh, and immediately Kerkeridon taking a an aggressive opening lead. Well, he knows who he's going at, who he has to face. I mean, that's fair. Now, I was going to say, part of Daggerick's deal, folks, if you don't understand, he is a Dwarven Prince. <clears throat> and uh, before he can ascend to the throne, he has to make a name for himself in glorious battle. And he's decided the best place he can do that here is in the Nexus. Well, he is just... Destroy, trying to destroy Carcaridon's knee. Yep. And oh, Carcaridon floats over. Neckbreaker. Oh, springboard moonsault. Oh, Carcaridon going up top. That fish likes to fly. Oh. You know, I don't. I don't think. Uh, you know, my understanding: dwarves probably don't eat a lot of fish. You know, you don't have a lot of dwarven fishermen. Uh, more, more of a hunting uh, jawbreaker. People. Yep. And up. Oh, oh, running neck breaker.
Oh! Never mind. And what's he playing? Oh, rolling him up. Oh, this isn't going to go good. Oh! Never mind. I believe that was what's known as the organ gun. Oh, floating over it. Karadon's got all that float over worked out well. Going for a moonsault. Dagrick not there. Now Dagrick going up top. But waited too long. Or, or did he? Never mind. Double axe handle. That's impressive. He takes a punch and it doesn't deter him on the top rope. Never mind. There it is. Dwarven driver all over. Kick out at two. Oh. Running headbutt from Carcaradon. Oh, and a moonsault from the dagger. And again! Dagrick is giving Karkaradon a lesson in brutality. Oh, never mind. There we go. Busted the dwarf open. There's blood in the water. Not to be confused with the move blood in the water. That's that's a whole different thing. Of course, of course. Hey, I got to dry. One, two, kick out at two by the uh, Megalodon Menace. Try that out for a new nickname for him. Oh, never mind. One, two, kick out at two by the dagger. And there you have it, folks. Off the top rope. Swan, and now going up again. Oh, Megalodon impact. One, two, three. And your winner, Corgaradon. Well, I guess if you're going to prove yourself against someone, as Carcaradon sought to do, there's no one better to go up against than the dagger. So, there you have it. Your winner, Carcaradon. A big win for them. I mean, yeah, taking on former champion like Dagrick. Just impressive all around. Absolutely. All right, folks. Well, hang on just a moment. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have more great wrestling action coming up. But first... Well, folks, we got to pay the bills. So Pete and I will be back after this brief commercial message. Hey, baby, I'm here to announce the Burning Lounge has become an official business under the M&W banner. Do come on in and visit. It has beautiful interiors where you can come enjoy the food, the wine, the music, and the dancing. Staffed by members of your very own MNW community and various other mythical creatures and beings from the cold, dark, unknown. Although the building is magical, no outside magic is allowed without permission. So come on down and feel the burn of the burning loud. 
Hello, beings of the multiverse. Does you love wrestling? Does you love dressing up to support your favorite wrestlers? Well then, you need to get down to Zach's shop today. Located at the corners of the Multiverses Avenue and Nexus Lane, we've got everything you need from mantelpieces to punching bags. No other store in the Multiverse has as big a selection as I've got with as low, low prices. If you think that's wrong, then you're insane! So come on down to Zach's shop today, or visit the website! And if you're not down here for our sale, I'll take me shooter and blast a hole right inside your Hi there, I'm Mega MegaBlitzX, former two-time tag team champion and big oof champion, and spokesperson for the Omega Pub. We at Omega Club created the pub as a means of leaving the drama and workplace stress behind so the wrestlers and staff can just sit back and relax, have a nice drink, and reinvigorate themselves for the next day. We've got your favorite brands of drinks from across the multiverse, karaoke nights on Fridays, and pay-per-view viewing parties. Now in our new mobile bar truck. But don't take my word for it. Here's some comments from our fellow wrestlers. After a hard day in the ring, and an even harder day deciphering the eldritch hieroglyphs of someone's bank statement, Omega Pub is a calming place to visit. Even the bar fights are relaxing. Sparrow here. I give Omega Pub an enthusiastic two super thumbs up for service and a friendly atmosphere and great drinks made to order. Take it from the three-time, two-time, four-time champion of Krakenbach the Creature. The Omega Pub serves the finest drinks. Omega Pub. With a champion's drink. Have a deadline to make, but it must be done by morning? <laughs> Feeling the midnight oil is not enough? Try Midnight Sun, the shot of energy you need to be temporarily nocturnal. No chemicals, no sugar, all natural ingredients. Comes in flavors such as crimson cherry, graveyard green apple, and howling blueberry. Midnight Sun. Become one with the night. Warning, do not use more than two shots in 24 hours or you may become hypersensitive to UV rays. Have you ever felt alone? Full of anxiety? Depressed? What is a hot fight? What is your mother's maiden name? Where is your mother right now? Do you ever go to a pub or lounge that doesn't serve chips? Apparently you do. Introducing... Ignacio's Nachos, made of the finest ingredients from New York City. If you're looking for a nacho with a kick that's unexpected, try Ignacio's Nachos. Find them wherever fine nachos are sold. Ignacio Cervantes is not affiliated with the Spanish Inquisition. Thank you. Hey, you, you flabby liquid ape! Are you tired of breathing normally like a punk? Do you want to take your oxygen straight to the head? Try a fresh can of canned air! Scientists have agreed that breathing may or may not kill you. Don't risk it today. Buy a can of canned air. When life says you can't breathe, tell them that you can. Canned air. And we are back. And so much to cover. We still have our number one contender match for the Unified Tag Team Championship. And of course, our main event title match between Osman Killick and Constantinople for the Big Oof Championship. But we have so much to go. But first, we should hear from someone we, we haven't heard from in a couple of weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you and this paperwork says I have to say, the richest man in the multiverse. I don't know if we have citation on that. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Sir Unkly Dunk. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it has been fun seeing you writhe underneath my feet, but I'm afraid your old friend Unkly has won. I was sitting at my desk thinking of new ways to torture you when I realized Wait, I'm rich! I can just buy the company! 
Why didn't I think of this sooner? I can purchase the company and drive you all into homelessness. There is no force on earth that can stop a wealthy man who is willing to spend a lot of money on petty revenge. Uh, let me get the phone right now. <laughs> Yes, I would like to purchase all of Multiverse Nexus Wrestling. I am willing to put down- What do you mean I can't just buy the company? Canadian law prevents multiversal beings from owning businesses? That is straight up discrimination. Curse you, Canadian law! Well, there goes that plan. Uh, forgot that's how VIP's plan to destroy Max got ruined. My lord, this is getting ridiculous. Not helping is the fact that the rest of Blood Money are frankly being useless. Butler is letting that Wolfman wannabe Alistair get into his head, and Nakodo is still wasting his time with Cloud Nine's former lackeys. My faction is becoming a joke. The brass has still not been destroyed, and I'm stuck here monologuing about my frustrations. Well... Mark my words, plebeians. Time favors the wealthy, and I am a very patient man. On one hand, I'm glad that obscure Canadian law protected us. On the other hand, I don't like it when Uncle Dunk decides to get creative. Yeah, it's not always a good sign. No, no, so, um, that's fine. Lady, you know what? I know a, a, a great thing we can do right now to deal with that anxiety. Let's head to the rings for our next match. Uh, by the way, is the, the there was a monitor reboot. You doing good? Uh, yep, yeah, looks like it. Okay, well then let's head down to ringside. The following match is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, Todd Bagman. Well, here he is, ladies and gentlemen, the newest recruit to MNW Warzone, Todd Bagman. Uh, he's had a, and, and this is his singles debut. So far, we have had Todd, well, there was that incident backstage with Seth. I keep trying to explain to Seth that it's just a paper bag over Todd's head. He's not an eldritch abomination. Um, he keeps going, but what about the eyebrows? You know, you know how it goes with Seth. Uh, but uh, Todd oh, issued an open charging. challenge to anyone. And someone accepted. And introducing their opponent, the cyberpunk prodigy, Aiden Zero. So, last Warzone, uh, because uh, Pete and uh, Michael were uh, stuck on an airplane, Aiden Zero subbed in and uh, kind of took offense a little bit at Todd Bagman for some reason. And uh, when he heard that Todd had issued an open challenge, basically on air said, accepted. And here we are. Also just want to note, it looks like we, we have a, a interesting uh, hashtag trending right now. Uh, Bag me daddy Todd. I, um, uh-huh, okay. It's not the worst hashtag we've ever had not the best but it's better than other daddy hashtags we've had that I'm not going to get into any further let's let's focus on the match so this could be interesting Todd Bagman had an impressive debut in a showcase match he didn't win but he eliminated most of the field oh that now he's now faced see how he is just one on one with Aiden Zero. Aiden Zero, who, uh, yeah, Aiden's been a, uh, Aiden's been a thing lately. In fact, uh, 
he uh, I, 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 he handed us a recording earlier, he, but he, it was in special instructions, don't play till after my match. So that's what we're going to do. But in the meantime... Oh, what are you... Hey, wait! This, this, this man... I mean, he's he basically has felt that high voltage has been being ignored since you, you know the uh, everything happened when uh, he took over, basically. Because remember, he's high voltage has had several members and is in fact one of the oldest factions in Multiverse Nexus Wrestling. That's very true. Yeah, but uh, you know it. Yeah, uh, Aiden was, in fact, not even, there are no founding members left in High Voltage, interestingly enough. Chaz Lee's not in there anymore. Uh, Yakiniku Party isn't in it anymore. Um, oh, uh, Zacho Duo isn't in it anymore. Uh, Justice Jake isn't in it anymore. I mean, uh, there, a lot of luminaries have been in, a lot of... People who went on to be champions have been members of High Voltage, and I think Aiden feels like it's his due now. It's his turn. And I, you know, you know what? To be fair to Mister Zero, oh, never mind. You know what? Let's focus on the match as Aiden and Todd are fighting outside the ring. Aiden brings it back in. And breaks the count and goes back outside for more fighting with Todd. Aiden making the statement that he is always and will forever be a plastic person. Well, you know, he comes from a cyberpunk future. One that I, we, I, you know, I'm unsure if, you know, the, the future, we've had so many futures. Apparently the future Aiden comes from is not the one Zacho Duo comes from. Apparently the Zacco Duo one doesn't exist anymore. Uh, unsure about Aiden's future, which I I don't want to know because Aiden I had to teach him I had to teach him what sharks were, trees. Oh, he didn't oh. know what pianos were. Aiden able to counter into a neck breaker. Yep. And now just oh, going after basically body going chop. after the bag. Body chop. Leg yeah. sweep. Rack and locate. Oh, rope break. Hey, the ref saw this rope break. I'm, I'm still surprised that Rapture New Road wasn't more upset about that. But anyway, dragging Bring Todd. To the of the ring. Yep. And stomping on him more. Stretching that. That's a very stretchy bag. Hmm, yes. And, but Todd breaks. Todd is... I will say this. Todd has been impressing me as a wrestler. Sure. I, you know, if I could just convince him to bathe a little bit more, he'd be great. Well, you know, it's he, he smells strongly of raccoon. Maybe that's the real reason Aiden wanted him. Doesn't but, like the smell of wet raccoon. I, you know. I mean, who does? I mean, fair enough. Oh, and Todd. Oh, I think Todd was going for a, like maybe a camel clutch or something. And Aiden snuck out like the sneaky bastard he is. Carrying Todd to the corner. And oh, just throwing him away like the trash. Oh, Aiden, the Aiden! 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 Do not bite it, Aiden. You don't. He lives with raccoons. He could have something. And Aiden or Bagman? Yes. Two count for uh, Aiden. Maybe getting a little frustrated. Again with that kicking combination. Yep. Oh, nice 
DDT, that is, he calls that one the in the bag, by the way. Two. two. Kick out at two. Oh, and Dragon Screw takedown really by the Cyberpunk Prodigy. Then again, he's got the divided by zero on him. Oh, that Bagman tapped. And your winner, Aiden Zero. Well, there, I, I guess Aiden's feeling good about himself. He scored a victory against the rookie Todd Bagman. And I guess it's back to the basics for Todd. I guess he's going to crawl into his dumpster and re-strategize. Three bag, maybe? I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's recycling. But uh, congratulations, Aiden. Now, folks, as I said, uh, there's uh, we have a recorded message that uh, Aiden said, don't even look at this until after my match. So I, I don't know what this is going to be. But ladies and gentlemen, let's hear from the cyberpunk prodigy, Aiden Zero. <sighs> McMorgan, you get in a team with someone who believes your bullshit, and all of a sudden you find your balls. You helped me during Multivania, that's true. But it wasn't out of the goodness of your heart. You were exacting revenge on Louis by taking out his backup and costing him his title. There was no debt I owed you. I fulfilled my end. I beat Louis. Everybody wins. And yet, here we are. Get my boys. I'm not gonna get my boys. I'm the one who encouraged them. Honor? Pfft, that was a Jake quality. Humbleness? No, no, no. That was a Chaz quality. But me? Oh, you and everyone seem to forget. I'm a freedom fighter. I am an expert in guerrilla warfare. We stick to the shadows, hit and move, we get the job done. No matter who likes it or not. Everyone has written off high voltage since I took the helm, and frankly, I feel disrespected. So allow me to reintroduce ourselves. Submission expert, the choking hazard, Wonderball. The exiled prince, Leonid. And I am the cyberpunk prodigy, Aiden Zero. You said it yourself, Scotsman. If you want something, you take it. We want a fight. We want recognition. We want a legacy. We want WAR! Keep my name out of your mouth before you wake up missing your tongue. Or maybe I'll just finish what Louie couldn't and break your damn neck. As if we, I don't have enough going on with Wild Hunt. I mean, yes, last, when we were on last and Aiden was commentating, there was some stuff going on with McMorgan, but Oh, and tweeting out on that uh, last matchup, uh, Sir Unkly Dunk tweeting, Oh, by God, my one weakness, the poor. I mean, that's fair. And then uh, he followed that up with, Someone look uh, for my magnifying glass. I'm looking for someone who cares about Aiden Zero right now. I Yeah, so here we go. Well, you know what? Aiden should be happy about one thing. And that is our next match. Ladies and gentlemen, let's see who is going to be the number one contenders at the pay-per-view to take on the all odds. Let's head to ringside right now. The following is a tag match scheduled for one fall and is for the number one contendership. Introducing first, Shoot Nation. And 
and here they are, former Tag Team Champions, Shoot Nation, looking to see if they can earn an opportunity to reclaim the gold. And, uh, I mean, that, you know, we've always said these guys are the perpetual underdogs. But um, after their uh, particular championship reign and participation in the C-101, I don't really think we can consider them perpetual underdogs anymore. Uh, they're, uh, yeah, they're, I, think, I think you've got a really strong argument to be made there. Yeah, and, I mean, they earned this, type, this shot at getting the contendership, so... Yeah, um, but let's see how they uh, go up against Zero's boys. And introducing their opponents. The High Voltage! And you have, ladies and gentlemen, here's Wonderball. Along with the exiled alien prince, Leonid Sanchez. Apparently he's human on one of his parents' sides. Don't, don't know uh, how that works, but... Uh, then again, there's a lot about the multiverse I don't necessarily understand. Yeah, because usually genetics isn't so... Um, split. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I, I mean, I could ask Dr. Grimm, but he, uh, apparently he left right after he, uh, gotten in, into a car with Chaz Lee and they, they took off. So, uh, he's the only geneticist I know. Knowing him, he'd want to take a sample and we don't want to get into that. So here it is. High voltage, getting that shot that Aiden was was screaming for. If they win, they go to the pay per view to face the all odds, but they've got to go through the former champs, Shoot Nation. So, here we go. Let's find out. De starting out with Devin and Wonderball. You know, Wonderball being in high voltage isn't a big surprise. Oh, Devin going right, you know, taking advantage, using that MMA background right up off the bat. Oh! Wonderball trying to get, you get him before he got back in the ring, but Devin knows how to get around that. Oh, but headbutt you. And in comes Leonid. Wonderball used headbutt. It was effective. It was effective. Yeah, of course, Wonderball, the one, you know, he and, um, he and Aiden bonded over uh, the joint having been screwed over by Louis McDonald. Tag made. But now, and, and now the Scorpion, Jack Abbott, comes in against the Alien Prince. And out goes Sanchez. And Abbott, you'd th think he would chase after him. Instead, he's just tagging in his partner. Taking their time, shoot nation. I think they've learned over, uh, you know, their uh, championship run, sometimes it pays to uh, just take a moment. I think Leonid just busted Devin open. I think you are correct. Yep, there. There's blood now just getting slapped by Wonderball. And oh, oh, ow. It's one thing to be airplane spun by your legs, but by your neck? Oh, and that... But, Devin returns punch. the favor with a just good old-fashioned punch. That's one thing about Shoot Nation. They're very pure in their styles. Not a lot of frills. They go in, they get the job done. Oh. 
But now you see the submission skill of Wonderball. As uh, Aiden himself was pointing out, Wonderball is a submission specialist, the one man choking hazard. And to the corner. in is, again, no really frills. The corner. Yeah, just slamming him in the corner. Well, I'll give Wonderball this. Once he picks a theme, he sticks with it. Certainly was bouncing Devin off these uh, ring, uh, ring corners. I mean, the, that padding isn't that much. There's still a steel buckle in there. So getting slammed into it, it you, may, you may go, oh, well, it's nice and cushioned. It's not that cushioned. Believe me, I know. And we have better cushioning, at least, than back in my day. And Wonderball taking Devin... To the red corner. Devin going, I don't like it here. I think I'll leave. Oh! Innovative DDT by Devin. Wonderball breaking out. And just scooping and slamming Good him. Slam. Mm -hmm. Going back and forth, these two. Yeah, I think it's about time for one of them to try to go for that tag. Uh, yeah, I, and it looks like he heard you. In comes Leonid Sanchez and Jack Abbott. Oh, good kick by Leonid. Right to the gut. But you, you that that headbutt. Oh, oh, never mind. Bulldog. And Good what is Leonid planning? There. Well, decided you know he was planning something, but I think he decided Abbott was too far away for it to be effective. So instead, he just does a flip kick. Oh, and a double axe handle uh, return for his trouble. Corner. And just driving him down. Now, locking in something. Thought Ooh. he was going to go for a tequila sunrise, but instead. Just Wrenching the leg. And watching Jack Abbott's style, you get you're reminded of the fact that he trained with Ginger Boy, recently retired MW champion. And in that comes Devin. But Sanchez gets the tag and in comes Wonderball! Oh, off the Brett's rope uh, axe handle. Oh, locking in. Locking it in, going up. Wrenching it in there. Dragging him in. Again, this is the submission style of Wonderball working over that head. Probably trying to soften him up for the band this. Going for a pin. I mean, there are times like that where if you can't go for the pin, go for the pin. And now, what's he doing? Yeah, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, ban this. And meanwhile, Leonid is keeping Jack Abbott from breaking it up. Is able to keep any interference. 
Yeah, at this moment, it's basically just a singles match between Wonderball and Devin. Hanging Devin out to dry. Ripping that arm, trying to rip that arm out of its socket. I mean, that's good just because it, you know, if you work over the arm, it reduces the potential of Devin's offense. Devin being primarily a striker. Now dealing with Jack Abbott, who is not the legal man, but still a presence you got to deal with. Nicely done, and now going for the pin, but Leonid right there. Working him over again. Oh, good melee kick out. Jaw breaker. Oh. And a headbutt for his trouble. To Wonderball. Oh. Devin not laying down for this. Again, they, they there's a shot at tag gold on the line. Devin would love to be a two-time tag champion. Uh, ew. And it too. only a two count. Very, very effective doing that uh, cutter off of the rope. But now Wonderball getting back into action, doing a doing a bulldog of his own, or more of a DDT, I guess. Now picking him up and what's he got planned? Well. This could be bad. Yep, yep, he's going for the band this again. Band this locked on. Can Leonid cut off? Nope. Devin break or Abbott breaks it up and freeing Devin. So Wonderball goes straight for the pin. Abbott able to break the pin again. <clears throat> and Wonderball deciding Wonderball he's got getting to... a little fed up with his interference. I mean, at times in these situations, you want to take care of those breakups. Get the other guy out of there. Get him stunned. Make him have to recover on the outside. But Abbott, fully totally healthy. And right now, Devin definitely in charge. Now what's Wonderball? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the Wonderball hits. Kick out at two. Kicking out. Trusting his partner well enough to let him kick out. Yeah, I, Bray, especially after hitting the Wonderball. And I'm sure that uh, the All Odds are watching this intently. They want to know who they're going to be facing at the pay-per-view. Tag made. Right now, it's looking good for the Shoot Nation, who, interestingly enough, that's who they took the belts off of. It would be a rematch. Now back to Abbott and Sanchez. Oh, Sanchez hitting him. Right in the gut. Now, su good suplex. Going, Going up, up top. top. Iron District. What's he got planned? Hyperdrive! Hyperdrive connects. Now what's he got planned? Going for another one? Oh, tag oh, made. Never mind, it's now time to face Devin. Going for a missile dropkick. Misses. Oh, just judo throwing him. I was going for a uh, elbow drop, but... Uh, 
got out of the way. Oh, DDT, and I think he's busted the alien prince open. Yep, I believe Sanchez is now bleeding. Running boot to Sanchez's face. Oh, I think Sanchez could really use a tag right now. I think you are correct. Or a suplex. Either works. That's a very quick DD. Going up top again. What's he planning? Oh, the elbow is what he's planning. That diving elbow. Shades of Macho Man. And again, getting frustrated with the Scorpion. Throwing him out of the ring. Going up and top again. again. Might be unconscious. Again with that diving elbow. One, two, three. And your winners, high voltage. Well, there you go, folks. There are your number one contenders for the unified tag team championships ladies and gentlemen high voltage is going to the pay-per-view to face the all odds and somewhere i can actually hear eight and zero cackling and it's a little disturbing yes but Congratulations to Wonderball and Leonid Sanchez. <clears throat> well, there you have it, folks. So we're going to give a moment for them to clear the ring as we get ready for the main event. That was number one contender action, and now we're getting ready for championship action. But first, tweeting out on social media, Flyboy Bell, I'm disappointed. Where was this 8-0 when the Kings beat High Voltage? That's a great question, Flyboy, but you've got to focus on your opportunity next week when you face Gore Wheel for that number one contender shot at the Nexus Titan Championship. Can you imagine this would be Flyboy? I think this would be Flyboy Bell's biggest opportunity for singles gold he's ever had. And then also tweeting out on social media is well it is alistair evergreen this is more like it uh people with venom behind their words i believe those words aiden i'm in the same mindset take what you want i plan to then we have a uh, uh from jaunt tristam you uh try to chase me at uh, heels injustice, but you did get one small thing wrong. I don't run, I strut. And in the end, only one of us will walk away with this in shame. And then uh, really quick advertisement being brought out. MNW Warzone is brought to you in part by Rubber Baby Buggy Bumpers. That's right, Rubber Baby Buggy Bumpers. The surefire way to make someone at least take uh, at least two takes on a promo. You no, know, I did great until that last part. I can say I Rubber say, Baby that's Buggy Bumpers. the part you messed up on. Yeah, yeah. The, well, because Rubber Baby Buggy Bumpers, once you're aligned for that, everything else is... So, with that, I mean, Michael's not here because apparently he has bubonic plague. But uh, in the meantime... It's time for the main event. But, oh, before we get there, actually can't miss this tweet from current tag champion Sasquatch Wing. By the way, thanks for the Squatch Roast. High voltage fight well, but when pay-per-view time comes, they will see why all odds are champions. Show your big strength, Leonid and Wonderball. You know what? At least that's, <clears throat> that's like do well from Sasquatch Wing. <coughs> oh, I need a little bit of squatch roast. Hang on a second. Mm. Ah. ah, yes, soothing blood rage. Let's 
strange how the blood rage makes me feel better. I've been in wrestling too long, deep. But yep. it's time, ladies and gentlemen, it is your main event. Let's do this! The following match is scheduled for one fall and is for the Big Oof Championship and is your main event. Introducing first. Osman Kill it. Gonna have to talk to those graphics guys. He was yeah. once known as Istanbul, but with the breakup of the Turkish delights and where things have gone, he has gone to his real name, Osman Kilik, as he gets ready to face his former brother-in-arms for the championship. And I, th I think he's taken extra care of. Look at that mustache. Oh, it is a very glorious mustache. I think he's done, he's done extra waxing on it. I mean, it. I mean, if you're gonna, it, it's a championship bout, so yeah, you want to show your best. And I think Killick is showing his best. I mean, he looks absolutely stupendous. Very glorious. Very mustache. Yes. I wonder. I wonder. You know, I didn't. I, I've never asked Absolute Washington if he has beard and mustache products, but he must. But here he is, and now he is going to face his former friend. And introducing their opponent. They are the Big Hoof Champion! The Constant Nightmare, Constantinople! And ladies and gentlemen, he is the Constant Nightmare, the Rat Ogre. The warp mutated man monster, Constantinople. <clears throat> he, former Turkish oil wrestler turned, well, all those things I just said before. And he is your big oof champion, having won that belt off of Sir McCheese. At Multivania. So here it is. This is going to be a big title defense and a lot of emotion in this match. Now, Constantinople has implored and stated that this should just be that it's just greed, that it's all Killick wants is the belt and nothing more. But let's be honest. They were a tag team when they introduced. They were both friends, brothers in arms. And now, uh, Osman, the former Istanbul, says he doesn't even recognize his old friend anymore. A lot and, can change in the multiverse. Oh, it can. It can indeed. We've seen it so many times, and that's what it's all about, folks, in the end. The Big Oof Championship. Yeah, awesome. And look, look, look at that. He is he has brought out he's brought out the battle beard. Oh, probably in the best shape of his career right now. Oh, absolutely. And there it is. 
We do the tradition of the belt. And let's not forget, next week we are going to have many contenderships figured out. But we'll worry about that next week for now. Two men have entered the ring. And they are going to face each other for the championship. Of course, Osman, a member of GIF Inc., Constantinople, former member of and last man standing of Chained Hell. And now they are just driving into each other. This is going to be interesting. They, they knew each other so well, but I have to wonder, does that still hold? They both changed so much since they worked together as a team. Do they really know each other anymore? Is that is, is their history going to give either one an advantage? Right now, just grab... Oh! Did he just... I think he just lifted him by the beard. Which one? That, yeah, the, the, the primary one. I'm pretty sure. Ah, uh, the dominant beard. Yeah, I mean, how else do you show oh, dominance? Thrown out of the ring. And, oh, tossed. I mean, this could go either way. I mean, Constantinople has shown himself to be a dangerous opponent, taking on several people, showing himself worthy of the big oof. But Osman has been making a name for himself as part of Jif Inc. When he, you know, he wins a lot of matches for his faction. And has shown himself that while he is a striker, he's definitely a thinking man's wrestler. Whereas Constantinople largely uh, seems to be uh, very based on following his instincts. Oh! Wow, that's a good use of the barricade. And now Osman is just circling the ring. I, was, was, I think that was an attempt to confuse Constantinople. I think Osman may have just been working the clock. Uh, possibly. But they're both in the ring. Oh, headbutt! Oh, and with that metal mask. Dragons do take over, or take down. Again, as we've said, there's a, a really good striking game on the part of Osman Killick. Some vicious elbows. Oh, great sit-down powerbomb. Now he is repositioning Constantinople. Again, ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event. One, two, kick out at two. That was a little early in the match. Oh, here we go. And... Oh, I think he was going to go for that two-handed choke bomb of his... Instead, we get uh, the same from Constantinople. A little turnabout is fair play. I mean, I, I guess there is a little bit about knowing each other. And again! Two, three, oh, he won! Quickly! Your winner and still Big Oof Champion, the Constant Nightmare, Constantinople. Well, there you have it. 
I, I suppose this matter has been settled. Constantinople has proven victorious over his former tag partner, Osman Killick, and retained the big oof championship. <clears throat> so this leaves the question then, Pete. You know, we have coming up on the, at the pay-per-view on the 22nd, I think we're going to need to work on lining up a new opponent for Constantinople at that event. So as we said, we have next week, it is going to be a lot of deciding on who will be facing whom at the pay-per-view. So, first off, congratulations tonight to High Voltage for winning the number one contender shot. And, of course, congratulations to Constantinople for retaining the big oof. Again, next week, we will be having the matches between Gorwheel and Flyboy Bell to determine Kane's opponent. And, of course, we will be having a fatal five-way to determine who will face Sam Jax. Uh, of course, Maximilian Thunderthighs and Mega Blitz are in that running and hang on, what? Hang on, Phyllis, what, what? Hang on, hang on, something's going on. We'll get cameras. What do you mean? We'll, we'll get somebody back there. Something's going on, folks. Something's happening backstage. Hang on, cut, cut the, get a camera backstage. The hell's going on? <clears throat> What's that's Mr. Butler and Alistair Evergreen. They've been having issues. And oh, so they're fighting in the backstage area near the near the uh, that pop machine that's owned by Uncle Industries. Wait a minute. Speaking of Uncle, that's that's Sir Uncle Duncan Whitney Lee. What the hell? That's Uncle Duncan, a member of Omega Club. The All right. So I guess Blood Money's going on a rampage backstage. Wait a minute, if we got Butler and Uncle, where's the, where the hell is Nakano Kirishima? Oh, never mind. He's back there attacking Gunner Birch with a hockey stick. So I guess Blood Money's going after, well, you got two members of Omega Club and then uh, Alistair Evergreen. Wait a minute. That's Maximilian Thunderthighs and Gorm. They don't even relate. What the? I mean, they've had issues, but the hell? A member of VIP. Max is, of course, one of the potential contenders for Sam Jack's belt. So I guess Gorm's decided since everyone else is going crazy backstage, he's going to get in on the action. And folks, you you can't see this right now, but but Constantinople is attacking Osman Kilik in the ring. <coughs> I guess he wasn't satisfied with his victory. Oh, wait a minute. Someone is coming out and it uh, looks like something's happening in the ring. But meanwhile, oh, backbreaker on Max by Gorm. Yep, Mr. Enigma, Killick's partner in Jif Inc. came out to rescue Killick from Constantinople. Now they're going on and going at it in the ring. It's chaos! I'm dealing with absolute chaos right now. Where? It's times like this. I wish I had good security. I'd say where's Jif Inc., but they're involved. See, this is why I... <coughs> oh, jeez. And Mega Blitz X, another of the potential contenders for Sam Jack's belt, is fighting Carney Vall. The Bloodline is trying to take out the known contenders for the... Potential contenders for the belt. What else? What else could be going on? Oh, headbutt onto the tension hero. Ugh. 
Security is trying to break, uh, get there and break up some of the fights that are going on. And, ugh, slit. I'm... What else? What else could happen? Ugh. Somebody, okay. Gary, you do realize you're not supposed to say that, right? I, uh, I, I regretted it the moment it came out of my mouth, but I'm sure it's fine. I'm hearing security has already broken up some of the fights. <clears throat> um, so, Uncle and, uh, uh, so yeah, Blood Money has been separated from their various opponents, but meanwhile, we still have this going on. It wait, Seth. No, Seth, he's not a hat. I keep telling you. <laughs> he's not an Elbridge abomination. He's just a man who lives in a dumpster with a bag on his head. Uh, Seth keeps saying he needs to deliver justice, but that kept... It's not... He's not an El... <sighs> oh, not, not the... I don't know whose car that... Oh... I'm gonna have to. We're gonna have to pay the insurance on that car. Please don't break anything. Ah, never mind. Just anyone? Uh, no. Let's, let's just no. Please. Okay, so I've got. I'm getting reports. Okay, so we've got the ring cleared. Uh, we got Gorm separated from Max. Um, somebody distracted Carnival with a dog collar and a squeaky toy, and I and we just lost the camera. <sighs> this is fine. It's yeah. Oh, and tweeting out on social media. Uh, Constantinople going. Uh, via Victus. Uh, that, that's a language, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, Mr. Butler going, you're going to look really good on my wall, Evergreen. Okay. And, uh, Kelly tweeting out, let the chaos begin. No, Kelly, we want the chaos to stop. Anyway. <sighs> well, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think we're going to end the show before anything else goes wrong. So for Pete McPherson, I am Jerry Aldini. We'll see you all next week. Good night.